Hello humans, this is Random Guy and welcome to the Random Channel. Today we're going to continue playing Medieval Fantasy Chapter 3 Part 5, I believe. Yeah, I usually do two chapters, um, you know, one chapter in like two videos. So yeah, usually they take up to like two hours or so to do one chapter. And last time, before I start reading, I'm gonna give my personal recap. Is uh, we were um, with Narisa, I believe. Yeah, N N Narisa, right? Okay, so Narisa, we were with Narisa, and uh, we entered the Nerul Temple, the Temple of Undying Love, and we saw Andral. He took over a Baron. We killed the Baron in our second playthrough, and then we uh, attacked few of the other members and uh, got out of there and ran all the way here in a fairly dilapidated state. Uh, to the temple of uh, Lathia and now we're going to enter and last time we did enter and we saw a lot of corpses so Narissa was like we're gonna fuck them up now so let's see where, where it goes recap you're returning to the temple of Lathia after a narrow escape below are the few last few passages from the previous book Lathia's temple stand ahead of you the street here is quiet okay hold on mm, okay um the street here is quiet, strange. J Jugar, Jugar, Jugar always stands at the door at this time of morning. Keep your wits sharp, wizard. Narisa whispers. The first door of the temple stands open. Despite concern on her face, tradition is tradition, so she removes her boot and makes you do the same before entering. Inside, bodies are strewn about. Puddles of blood mar the otherwise perfectly white floor. Uh, blood drawn symbols are everywhere on the walls and the statues even on the altar of Alethea. Everything is still like a paint, horrible painting. Narissa's mouth hangs open in disbelief for a moment. Then she rushes over, rushes over to one of the white robe bodies. Prathea, she whispers hoarsely. She then runs from body to body checking them for sign of life. Finally she says, I suspect it. Uh, finally she says, I suspect it is only you and I wizard. By Alethea we will make them pay for this. The two of you begin looking around the room behind the benches, behind the altar, anywhere there might be survivors. Alethea weeps. Narissa exclaims as she points up to the statue of the goddess. Sure enough, tears of blood trickle down her hard white face. Hard because, you know, it's a statue. They have desecrated this once holy place. Alethea's influence has been banished where it was once most, most strong. We must search the rest of the temple for survivors, says Narissa. Just then you notice the tips of boots poking out from underneath one of the large ornamental uh, curtains. Just then you notice the tips of the tips of boots poking out from underneath one of the large ornamental curtains to the side of the altar. The fabric is light. You assume whoever is hiding there is watching you. Point this out to Narisa. Oh my god, life decreases uh, too. I should have just uh, blasted them. Is that it? Maybe it's just some random survivor. How am I supposed to know? Okay, that's this is a bullshit choice. Every now and then I call bullshit on the choices, and I'm taking my chance to call bullshit on this one. There's usually one bullshit choice throughout the chapter. Then where is there is no way for me to know. You know, um, uh, it's like uh, you you see an apple lying on the floor. Pick it up or don't pick it up. You pick it up and suddenly a goblin stabs you in the neck. It's like a fucking retarded. Like you can't just do that. Like it's in the middle of jungle. I can kind of understand. And even then, you wouldn't be just like it's in a bit of the open area. You can't just expect me to suddenly think that a goblin appeared from underneath me and just stabbed me from nowhere. So it's it's every chapter there's at least one choice. I think the first chapter is the only one where there's not a bullshit choice. I think, but. Uh, um, I think, uh, but uh, yeah, I know it's linear, but you know, what was the point of taking my life away if uh, this is how it's going to be? To be honest, they should just uh, do it like this that, uh, you know, make the choices mean something that give me some hints at least that would uh, point out that something would happen like this. Last episode, there was also another choice that I called out, uh, which I don't remember right now, and like this one. And like boots are poking out, uh, someone's behind the curtain. So my first choice is just burn them to death and uh, then uh, be amazed as fucking uh, who's that? There's a little girl who was hiding behind there. 
<laughs> that would be hilarious actually but still uh, you should at least give me some hint there should be some hint to everything uh, in this uh, you know it, it's a storytelling um, it's not how it works i mean like in real life you see um, you you're with your parents right in your house you come inside your house uh, your family or whatever and then you see uh, food, uh, you know boots behind a curtain that were not supposed to be there would you just like fucking grab a knife and throw start chucking it at the fucking uh, curtain or would you like uh, tap your wife or whatever on your, uh, your father or whatever on the shoulder and tell them like look someone's there and you and then you shout out to them then come out of there what the fuck type of choice is this You are able to Narissa and touch her shoulder. She has tears in her eyes. You nod your head over towards the curtain. Someone's hidden there. You whisper. Narissa peers hard up at the altar. Her mace out and ready. The curtain. You whisper. Suddenly, a figure wearing a yellow robe and purple mask steps out behind the curtain. Death to Narul slaves for this blasphemy. Narul slave. What? Narissa. Oh, okay, Narissa says that. Although Narissa is the one making the threats, you are unfortunate to be between her and the cultist. From his outstretched fingers, he issues a hissing black ray. You dodge, but you still grazed by the evil magic. You feel some measure of your life being sucked, life sucked from you. When Narissa steps aside, steps beside you, raises a mace over her head, throws it with all her might, as though the goddess Alethea herself guides the weapon, spins over, over and end over over what? End over end. What type of fucking language is that? It spins around. It spins in a circle. It spins. It spins. It spins is more than enough. It spins in the air and strikes the priest. It spins end over end. What type of bullshit is that? <laughs> Square in the face. Um, dropping him like a rock. Narissa leaps up to leaps up the dais, picks up her mace, and bashes the fallen priest several times. So beautiful and yet so violent. You think to yourself. Of course, it's difficult to blame her under circumstances. A female voice begins chanting from somewhere. Narissa runs up to the other curtain, flanking the altar, and pulls pulls it back to reveal a woman in a bloodstained yellow robe, murmuring in some strange language through a purple mask. Children, a rule did this. You think? Still your tongue or die, Narissa commands. Narissa, you shout. The body of one of the slain priests of Alethea is quickly standing up as another begins to twitch. Seeing this, Narissa turns back to the masked woman, swings in, uh, steps in, swings her mace. The woman ducks or runs behind the altar, starts chanting again. Kill her! She's raising raising the dead. You shout, but you see that your instruction is unnecessary. Narissa is chasing the now laughing woman around, around and around the altar. What are the kids? Meanwhile, the first corpse raised is leaping over the pew towards you. Help Narissa kill the woman. What the what the okay, um. So I think if uh, you know, uh, as in a in classic RPG format, kill the summoner to kill the summoni. Uh, so yeah, you suppose that if, uh, if you help Narissa kill the woman, she will not be able to raise any more minions. Physically intercept priest and burn her with a spell. Life decreases one, mana decreases two. In an arcane phrase and motion of your hand, the bolt of flame appears and you throw it. It is a fine throw, hitting her in the back as she rounds the altar. Her robe goes up like a lantern wick. She's you're confident she won't be raising any more dead. Speaking of which, the charging priest of Alethea is now upon you. That thing is fast. It's grabbing, scratching as it tries to bite your face. You both land on the ground. Your head smacks against the stone floor, knocking you unconscious. When you awaken, uh, what must be a few seconds later, you see Narissa bashing some writhing zombie on the ground. She must have already taken care of the one that attacked you while you were unconscious because it lies motionless nearby. Its head caved in. By the time you get up, Narissa has finished her grisly work. Has opened a door on a far wall. Likely, there are more villains to slay. You follow her into a torchlit hallway. Immediately, you hear distant commotion, shouts, and the clanging, a uh, clanging of metal against metal. Narissa begins sprinting down the hall. Sprint after her because you know. Uh, if people are fighting, you know, this is the best option to go there. There wouldn't be traps in the room, considering, you know, the, they pass through here to attack those people. So you know, it's kind of it's kind of weird if there are traps until unless they dr- are dropping mines down. That could be a thing, but I don't know. I think uh, it's it's good enough. 
to decide that uh, it is best to stay with Narisa since she is rather handy with that maze. The two of you follow the sound of clanking down a flight of stairs and burst into an oval room. With a small pool of water inlaid in the center, one priest of Alethia fa f floats face down in the pool, another is desperately attempting to fend off two knights wearing bloody plate armor. The surviving clearing is, appears to be badly wounded. One of the knights turns and charges at you with a roar, his shield, sword and shield raised. I'm gonna charm him. Uh, you point uh, to one of the knights and recite the magical words while blowing kisses in it. That's the weirdest thing. You feel the connection take hold. Nero will be praised. It is you. Then a knight exclaims. Wizards come. The other knight shouts and the charges at you with a sword. You enchant knight. Your enchanted knight sprints after him. You turn. You turn to run or are knocked to the ground when the knight rams his shield into your back. Looking up from the ground, you see the knight raising his sword over his head to deliver you a final blow. But your enchanted knight crashes his body into his comrade, sending them both down. The two of them then get up and commence fighting. Falador, you are bewitched, shouts the second knight, but your enthralled knight does not listen. Rather, he presses the attack. Second knight, perhaps the better fighter or perhaps just lucky, lands a mighty blow in the joint between the breastplate and abdomen, cutting the chainmail beneath. beneath. Your bewitched allies goes down, but then Narissa slams her mace against the other knight's helm. The mighty clang, he falls to. Clang, clang, clang. Narissa bangs away on the Knight on the ground like a blacksmith, a very poorly trained blacksmith. <laughs> Soon he is no more than a dented up heap. Meanwhile, a bewitched knight with his entrails peeking out from the left in his armor is dead. Thelso, what the fuck is Thelso? Narissa cries as you both run over to the fallen cleric. You can see the light fading from his eyes as you prop him up. Narissa begins praying for a healing spell from her goddess. The nightmare walks in a body that will never die. Thelso's statement ends with a sigh. Oh. Did he possess someone super powerful or something? Sentence ends with a sigh. And then his eyes close. Narissa finishes the spell and places her hand on his head. I'm too late. He's gone. How do these knights fight alongside these evil priests? And what demon? And what business have they all with the demon? Power. What more do the powerful want? You shake your head in disgust. Truly, Ring City has fallen under dark times when her warriors sworn to protect the weak and the good slaughter holy men. Alethea alone can protect us, although only through mortals such as us. May she exert her will in this world. Not knowing what else to do, you nod as though no wiser word had ever been said. Do you smell that? Is that fire? Melissa asks and then stands up. You follow her down one smoky hallway and then another. You stop at a doorway from which a smoke Billows out. Oh, this is what they're doing. You know what they're doing? They're uh, removing her from history. Uh, that's what they're trying to do, at least. Uh, think about it. I mean, uh, even in this fantasy land where gods actually do exist, they can't do anything in the mortal plane of existence. I mean, uh, I guess considering that the demon king is capable of sending these low level demons into the world, the Kandral. I'm guessing God has the capability of sending someone like that as well. I'm not sure. Uh, like angels or whatever, like lesser angels or something. Um, but the thing is, is uh, I think, uh, yeah, I think uh, if like, if you remove the God's presence from the world, if, like, uh, how, you, how should I put, who the fuck is screaming outside? Every single day they're just screaming, every single fucking day, it's so fucking annoying. I just want to leave this damn place already. Uh, whatever, so, um, I think, like, if you remove a god's presence from the world, right? Um, like, uh, let's say today, uh, you know, uh, we worship a particular god, right? And then uh, something happens, and then all the historical records of it are removed, and... Um, or maybe they never existed in the first place. And then the followers, the people who followed a, a particular god got killed. So now no one remembers them. Maybe the people who killed them remembers them. But they, they would not uh, perpetuate it down to their children. So eventually their god will vanish from the world. So even in this world where god actually exists. Unlike our world where it doesn't. Um, Alethea may exist. But uh, she won't... Uh, may exist i'm saying i'm not confirming that there's gods in this world but uh, if uh, alethea may exist 
so uh, even she won't be able to do anything she would become like a puppet goddess at one point when no one is following her when uh, she is scrubbed out of history that's how you know the scrubbing of history goes a lot of things are uh, slowly and steadily removed from history like like even uh, other things like uh, let's say world war 2 um, hitler was uh, never confirmed to be to have died in germany there were always a uh, scene that uh, he might have escaped to argentina using u boats uh, u boats are the submarines uh, his uh, navy had and uh, considering the, that four of his other generals did actually escape to um, argentina there's a high possibility he himself did also escape to argentina considering that the skull that uh, that, that is on display in russia they actually checked it out a few years ago and it would seem that it's a female skull so it's not actually hitler's skull so that poses a, a you know question as to where he went so but, but you know uh, if you suddenly this someone says that you know hitler was actually never he actually never died he never killed himself he actually just so uh, historians wouldn't usually don't usually say that because they don't have first proof but they don't have proof that hitler died either but they say that because people that's what people want to hear so that most people now think that uh, hitler actually died there uh, confirmed 100% right and because of that the other one that the, he escaped to argentina that possibility will slowly be scrubbed out from the annals of history uh, that's how you know history changes you know history removes itself uh, it's normally is because of people you know people or their own perspective they like to remove things that they don't personally like i mean like literally you have an option like it's like you are uh, like let's say you're the only sole survivor of a battle between two kingdoms in, like the far reaches of the world like no one knows about that land right now you come to uh, this uh, this new land and uh, you you go to the king and everything you tell him you know uh, there's a kingdom uh, that, that has been destroyed now uh, you could you could in essentiality like let's say uh, some um, tsunami came and while the war was going on the entire kingdom was completely submerged now there's no no way for them to go and check there's no for no way for them to confirm anything so you could literally make up anything you could just like yeah there was just one kingdom and there was no other kingdom and there was just one king and this was his name and this is what happened and then uh, this uh, this event happened and then the the area got destroyed now there's no way to tell so you are the you can change history according to your own ways depending on your influence and your positioning and that's how you know history works even in a, like even you study history actually like you know you do something in particular you know studies in history you come across these schools of historiography they basically Uh, they actually t- tell you how history is analyzed you know and written and the funny thing that i find is that there's no school of history that actually writes history as it was happening i mean as it happened right uh, the schools of history historiography are actually based on what people think and what people's own personal opinion is actually change the history like the marxist historians they They write history based on the economic point of view sub subalterns there are that uh, write history based on uh, you know the condition of the common man and then there's a uh, orientalist who write history in favor of the british nationalist uh, for their own country and stuff like that you know uh, they 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 alter history ever so slightly to pose their own uh, personal agenda push their personal agenda forward there's no school of historiography that actually supports just writing history as it happened uh, and not changing anything uh, you know that's that's kind of an issue i always n- i've never liked that idea the library these are books here i must save i will return narisa uh, leans far forward and few steps appear few steps later disappears into the smoking room you do not know any spells that dis- uh, extinguish fire nor are you sure what use you could be to narisa on the other hand you have the notice that you generally do better together as a team and that's bad uh i want to follow her uh, and there we go that was a bad decision run into the library after narisa the smoke is very thick and you're nearly blind you begin to cough there is another coughing over narisa you shout go 
go back goes narissa's voice but you cannot see her what is the dim shape of bookshelves you turn and look for the door leading out we cannot find it. ducking down near the fire you try to escape the smoke down here it is better however you still can tell where is where you are in relation to narissa or an exit after crawling around for a few rooms, a fallen timber falls upon your back, knocking you f flat on your face. Luckily, the timber rolls off of you, You're able to keep crawling, although your back is killing you. Finally, you again hear Narissa's distinctive cough and then see her boots running by. You follow in that direction, soon find the exit that takes you back into the hall. Narissa is in the um, Narissa is in the hallway, bent over, coughing. Two large books at her feet. When she sees you, she looks relieved and then annoyed. You disregarded my words. She, did she say tell me to stay put? I didn't see that. Disregarded my words at your peril, uh, wizard, she says, and then without answering for waiting for an answer from you, she picks up the books and walks off. The two of you search the rest of the temple only to find more slain priest of Alethia. Narissa insists that you help her drag the wood bodies to the wood lined meditation chamber and joining the library to burn. As you shouldn't we call the guards at this point? As you lean over, coughing in that smoke, Narissa folds the arms of the fallen on the floor and says a brief prayer for each. When the two of you finally walk out of the front door of the temple, you see smoke all around. The fire has spread faster than we thought. Not the fire from the temple. Look, Narissa points off into the distance. Uh, plumes of smoke rise from the city. What evil is this? Narissa calls to a passing uh, woman sh uh, shepherding along two children. Goblins. They have breached the outer wall. The woman shouts, Goblin is a beast, the outer wall, Narissa's, Narissa's face reddened. In Alethea's name, give us strength. She begins to jog, a chon, uh, I almost had a chon main jiggling, her chain mail jiggling. Where are you going? You ask. To defend the middle wall, she answers. Naval scat, they attack in full daylight. Surely goblins are drawn here, emboldened by a far greater evil inside the city. Perhaps we could... We should concentrate on destroying the demon, leaving the city to the city militia, uh, goblins to the city militia, you suggest. The guard will be too busy with the goblins to pay you any mind. I'm not afraid of the goblins or the gallows. She thinks me a coward after all the danger. I'm not afraid of the goblins or the gallows, you exclaim. Wait, what, what, what? Uh... Okay. She thinks me a coward. After all the dangers we have faced together, uh, how can she? What can you do? Convince Narissa to hunt the demon. The best way is to hunt the demon, I'm pretty damn sure. Jog up to Narissa, whisper near her ear, ask your goddess if this is the right path. You and I are destined to fight a greater evil, not some, some decoy. Why is it now that the demon's force is slaughtering everyone in your temples? Because we know, we know there is a puppet master. Destroy him and the rest will fall. You put a hand on her shoulder and stop, and she stops walking. Alethea stood by me in your vision. Today, when even knights of our city are under the thrall of the abyss, who else can we trust but each other? Narissa, I am telling you that it is the demon we must take aim at. Gods, do I truly believe this? I am no martyr. Nonetheless, who else will avenge and Regnal and the rest, you think? After a bit more cajo cajoling, Narissa admits that fighting the goblin would likely only waste time, power, and perhaps even your life. She leads you through the streets which are now currently abandoned, everyone having either gone or, def or to defend the wall or to hide. You stop in you stop in front of a large brick house. You see from the ornate stonework of Alethea's symbol and likeness that this is indeed a house of the goddess. Narissa knocks on the door in a peculiar way, as though tapping out a song. The door opens on its own accord. Inside you are greeted by Sulen, the head servant of the house. She is a tall, stoic woman with graying hair cinching up in a tight bun. He tells you that the house family and the rest of the servants have retreated to the safety of the inner wall, but that she refuses to leave this house to the goblins. If those women breach the middle wall and make it to my master's house, I'll be ready, she says, patting a loaded crossbow she cradles in her arm. You may stay here and rest, of course. By the way of... By the look of you, I assume... I presume you have already engaged the enemy. Sulen looks between you and Narissa. Narissa does not answer the question, only peers up at the up the stairway. The guest bedrooms are yours, and of course, please use the prayer room for your meditation. You and Narissa then thank Sulen. Uh, that's a female, or uh, yeah, that's a female. Ascend the stairs and shut yourself into one of the guest rooms. Narissa drops the two giant books on the bed and begins 
paging through the larger book this is a book of names for the this is a book of names for the abyss a sort of social register for demons why are demons are registered in a fucking social register I mean that means that these demons have come in the past so they just record their name every time they come Wear over her shoulder. Helmet is off. Her long blonde hair is down. You can smell the smoke from the library fire mixed with her sweat. A strangely alluring combination. You wonder if there is any comfort you could give her. Some light touch to her. Some light touch to remind her that she is not alone. She has lost much, not her faith, however. Ah, here it is. Nyssa exclaims as she points. I mean, we we are uh, we are we are into some uh, odor fetish. It would seem like. <laughs> Sweat and burning books, of course. You know, I thought he would say blood. I mean, I mean that that's a, that's a sweat and blood would be. A, uh, I would think uh, sweat and blood would actually smell pretty good. I think I'm not sure. Like water and dirt smells pretty good. Uh, not the normal dirt, of course. Uh, when you know it's rains and there's the that musky smell in the air. It's like that. My life is pretty damn low. Here it is. Nessa exclaims as she points at a line from her book. Unreal. Yes, he is mentioned, but only briefly. This is ad- uh, this addresses him as a demon of a second rank, little more than a soldier, uh, and that is all it has to say of him. This demon who murdered my friend, slaughtered your clerics, and now burns your city is not even powerful among his kind. You ask, slaughtered your clerics? Is this the sort of comfort I give? You chastise yourself mentally. <laughs> I wonder. Nessa says, as though thinking aloud. Does Unreal operate at the behest of his lord, or could he be possibly be on his own? Demons are obedient only to force. You shrug. Does it matter? I only want to send him back to the abyss, back to his lord and his deserved torment. Precisely back to his torment. Back at the temple of eternal love, Unreal said that he wanted a permanent body in this world. Little wonder why. In a sense, Unreal lo- lowly status in the demon world makes him more dangerous. Surely he is desperate not to return there and will do anything to avoid it. After all, the most depraved cruelties of our universe are a mercy compared to normal treatment of un- underlings in the abyss. Okay, but how will he gain this permanent body? Well, he cannot simply possess one. To possess a dead corpse is like trying to hold on to a glass wall. There is nothing to anchor to. Zombies are made this way, but such possession can uh, possession cannot be maintained long. Possessing a living body is no better. A living body can already contains another soul, one that you can grapple. However, the rightful owner of the body is constantly trying to push you out. As I have said before, it takes a great deal of power to hold on to a world that is not your own. As the answer to your question, I do not know what that means. He seeks to acquire a permanent body. Perhaps the answer is perhaps his answer is in there. He points to the other book, the one in your lap. Narissa picks up this book back to the Temple of Everlasting Mind. They are paying homage to Nerul, a Lord of Undead. Uh, so from the fire, I make sure to snatch a book of Nerul. My such foresight and composure in a tight spot! You exclaim. There is a flicker, flicker of smile uh, before she continues. Not precisely what we seek, but here is a passage of the most mundane of dead, mundane of undead zombies. Oh, as we saw, you let the sentence trail off. Yes, as we saw at my temple, the corpses of my people used assembled trails off. Certainly, she feels anguish for the loss of her brothers and sister. You want to comfort her, however, she is a cleric of Lethia and is to be treated with respect. You do not want to offend her or her goddess. Apologize for the stupid remark. Run your finger through her hair. That is definitely not something I'm going to do. Apologize for the stupid remark, my lady. I humbly apologize for my insensitive remark. I cannot imagine the pain you feel. My lady, I humbly. I know these are medieval times because of the R nice guy uh, subreddit. <laughs> I just every time I see my lady, I'm just like, ah, man, come on now. But you know, uh, it is true. Like that's how they spoke to you know how highly respectable, uh, you know, higher position females back in the day, my lady. Uh, I humbly apologize for my insensitive remark. I cannot imagine the pain you feel. There is a smile sadly. Why is there? Uh, they, they didn't proofread this. There's a, you know, uh, inverted columns at the start of this with no reason. There's no reason to be that. Uh, then Narisa in the third. This is the fourth line. The second paragraph, first line, and there's Narisa, and before that there's a double column. You know, what, what is it called? I forgot. Double semicolons are now. 
Yeah, is that yeah, that should not be there. Nisha smiles sadly. You are a good man to say this. However, you need not fear for my feelings. I am a warrior for my goddess, and take comfort knowing that through me, she will make the guilty pay for her transgression. For the transgression, she reads silently for a minute or so, and at some point, you remove your hand from her shoulder. Nisha speaks. Her voice is steady. But when did I put my hand on her shoulder? When Nisha speaks, her voice is steady. According to the text, corpses, uh, corpses. Cor corpses how do we, corpses are awakened by being possessed by a soul from another world these zombies must feed on another soul too in order to maintain their tenuous hold on corpses and so are driven mad with hunger more than flesh these things want my soul you ask yes uh, she pauses before resuming her uh, reading as your soul leaves your body the undead drinks from your life energy for a time diminishing your soul's power before passing on to the next world they are mad with hunger and do not understand the true nature of that which sustains them they know only they must kill must eat they certainly are vicious and fast much faster than the stories i have heard you say yes alas the evil priestess had just raised the zombies and a newly raised zombie is the most energetic and uh, dangerous that is uh, this is because the soul has been recently summoned and, and is in the fresh body over time without constantly feeding their soul energy slowly and painfully slips back to their home universe until eventually they vacate the corpse entirely that is a looks up from the book at you the text recommends you never allow your enemy to raise the dead i do not need a book to tell me this you say and both of you have to laugh presently i say say alas i presume there is a less obvious wisdom in these books read as i pray for guidance at the shrine for this good house she leaves you to the book as a wizard it is comforting to study you quickly lose yourself in the books of the undead arcane one interesting point that jumps out at you is that typical necromancer who raises the dead is not safe from their monsters a zombie or the like will seek to kill even those who animate them to counter this necromancer carry a body uh, objects usually unholy symbols of nerul to repel their own undead minions it seems like no time has passed when narissa returns I must join the city defenders. Alethea has granted me more of her healing breath and prompted me to care for my for the many wounds. You shall stay here and muster your strength for the battle ahead. Okay, good. Now, Nisa, leave. Nis, the fuck is that? Man, someone's banging on the walls with a fucking hammer. <laughs> What type of damn fucking place to live in? Um, it is not like it's like in some uh, rural area. It's like uh, some like completely barren and like untouched by society area. I'm living in the middle of a goddamn city. I'm living in the middle of a capital of the damn country, and in a in the most urban area possible. <laughs> you can tell when the most urban, one of the more more urban areas of the country are, you know. This level of bullshit. I'm pretty. I'm sure you can hear that. I'm just talking over him so that he don't. You can't hear him. It's like fucking screaming right outside my fucking door. Oh my god! Fuck off. And when I mean when I uh, you know move to the other. Oh my god! He's standing right outside my door at this point. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell him to move. I'm gonna tell him to move. The fucking vendor was standing right outside my fucking door. I told him to fucking move. Then then he went away. So fucking annoying, dude. Like, where do I fucking record? Is there any place that I can sit down record without any? I think there might be. I mean, I could go to the first floor. I mean, this is a damn house. I'm not living in a flat or nothing. I can just go to the first floor into the back room. I think there would be much more peace and quiet. I mean, if they start screaming again, I'm just gonna go upstairs. Fuck that. Nisa leaves. Nisa leaves you in the bedroom as a revo. <laughs> What the fuck? Now, as I leave you in the bedroom, as a wizard, it it is important for you to remember rest in order to regain your spell casting power. Not to mention to recoup your strength from the beating you have taken on this adventure. Occasionally, you hear Selene, the head servant, walking about, moving something or the like. At the same point, she leaves you a bowl of soup and bread, which you greedily devour. Now that the, you are in no immediate danger, you realize how long it has been since you have eaten. Really, it was at the inn where you had your victory feast with Ragnald and Kaiba. Now that seems like a very long time ago, indeed. You are awakened from a nightmare. The sun has gone down, and you are alone, lying in the bed or the guest room. The book 
of the undead open next to it. Despite being away, you cannot shake a feeling of dread. The house is silent except for some scratching noise. No doubt it is only Cillian, the servant. Although if it is a goblin, I best make out, I best find out and make an escape. You, you reason as you get out of the house to investigate. You follow the noise down a hallway, peer into the room. Uh, peer into a room dimly lit with candles to see a terrifying sight. There lay Solen on the floor, uh, wooden floor, moaning softly. On her, on top of her is a man, his mouth on her neck, his Adam's apple sliding up and down as he swallows over and over. Suddenly, the man looks up at the ceiling and begins to in the air. From this angle, you see his eyes glowing like solid white orbs, and you can dimly make out wings. Wings shaped like bag, only instead of leathery black, they are coated with pale human skin. The thing crawls off Solen's body while continues to sniff and then looks straight at you. It's wide voice, void of expression, blood dripping from his chin. What do you do? Retreat from the room. What else I'm gonna do? I'm not gonna stand there and launch fire projectiles at it. Even a strong urge to run out of the house. On the other hand, the exit is downstairs at the end of a long hall. Alternate the shrine of Aletheia, which Narisi, uh, Narissa prayed earlier, is much closer. But as the aura of the goddess would repel or weaken this thing, run for the shrine. You're not sure what this thing is, how it's most certainly evil. And you hope the shrine will offer some protection. As you run from the room, you hear a screech like sort some of some sort of animals. Vampire, obviously. Um, very low-level vampire, if it's not that, you know sentient and not that level sentient mostly hunger based type vampire as you run from the room you hear a screech like some sort of animal then the flap of wings you scramble into the shrine room just as you feel a gust of wind behind you here's another screech the longer than the last you back up against Alethea's altar and look upon the monster it seems unable to unable or unwilling to enter the room Come to me. The creature lips moves as it is saying the word, but the voice seems to come from inside your own head, own mind. You feel yourself fo falling into the white voids of his eyes and take a step forward towards him as though being pulled along by a cord. Then there is another voice, another voice in your head, a woman's voice, pure and rich. Do not go to him, she says. You lean against, you lean back against the altar and shake your head as though breaking a spell. The man lifts his lips in a snarl and revealing long white fingers. He puts his hand and appears to push against an invisible wall. If you are living in the model world, you might appear this might appear like the antics of a of a meme mime of anime. I think it's anime. He just put a space there and perhaps strike you as funny. Unfortunately, you lack this perceptive and are not at all amused. <laughs> Oh, a mime! Okay. <laughs> okay, if you're living in the model world, this might appear like the antics of a mime. I thought he was saying of an anime. So I was thinking about like some magical anime where there's some barriers. I thought, like, how is that funny? But uh, a mime, you know those guys when they act like there's like a ball or they have a rope in their hand. They're really good at what they do, actually. Also, you can tell, if you don't have never seen them, then you can look at the Pokemon, Mr. Mime. He does the same thing, you know, it likes, uh, there's something in front of him, there's nothing. Even though he has the power to create something there, or whatever. Uh, right. Unfortunately, lack like this uh, perspective and are not at all amused. You retreat to the side of the altar and notice tears of blood beginning to form on the statue of Aletheia. Uh, no, please do not weep. You plead as much as much to yourself as you do to the goddess. What do you do? Retreat further into the shrine and pray. Okay, now that's a bad idea. Retreat further back into the room, close your eyes and pray. Up until now, you had never honestly prayed to the gods. As a wizard, you have only relied on your spells. That is... That was a bad move on my part. Sorry. I thought that, I mean, you know, you... Um, I would think that uh, I would. I didn't think that my guy would close his eyes to pray. You know, you can pray normally, like face the creature and then pray. Like, just how difficult would it be to like hold your hands up and like God's help or some bullshit like that? But that shit doesn't work in real life. And well, apparently, it didn't even work in the 
fake fantasy life where gods actually exist, but you know, never it is. Okay, yeah, whatever. Never understood much. Tapping into the powers from other planes of the multiverse. Now it is different. Now the evil is so great. You feel that nothing less than divine intervention will protect you. Suddenly, there's a blow to your head, and you feel searing pain. A silver cup clatters, rolls near your feet as blood streams down one of your eyes. The monster is laughing. He threw that goblet at me as I prayed. You realize to thwart uh, further missiles, you crawl behind the altar. The strikes you. This strikes you as a bit undignified. You hope Alethea will answer your prayers just the same. Um, a minute or so passes as you alternate prayers with peeking over the altar as the monster that is pushing ever so slowly towards you. He is almost to the altar when the Narisa uh, strides into the room and shouts in Alethea's name, I repel you, demon. The monster snarl, turns and snarls and takes a step towards the cleric, Narisa, and uh, raises her mace and touches her holy symbols to it. The head of the mace erupts in a white light. The monster cowers for a moment and then takes to the air. Step aside, Narisa, you shout. You cannot repel the thing into Alethea's altar. Allow it to leave. You think to yourself. Narisa must have thought the same thing because she just uh, jumped to the side, allowing the beast to sail past her out of the side. A moment later, there is a crash of breaking glass. You assume it flew through a window. I hope he cut his own throat, you think. Um, briefly, you fill Narisa in on what's, uh, what happened when she was gone. A, a vampire, an only union of demon and mortal, an abomination, she says. Narisa pauses and then her uh, voice becomes urgent. Take me to Solon. You lead her to where Solon's body has been, but it's gone. There's a sound on the other side of the bed. You investigate. Solon is convulsing on the floor, her mouth agape as though in great pain. A demon seeks to merge with her soul. Quickly move aside. You uh, step out of the way. Narisa steps up to the woman with her mace and brings it down hard on Solon's head several times. An unpleasant, unpleasant necessity. Narisa says when she noticed you staring at her in horror. Another minute she would have uh, risen as a vampire herself. Narisa knees down and blesses the body. She then stands up and says we must depart this house for it is a safe haven no longer. Is there nothing we can do for Solon? <laughs> After her head is cracked open, <laughs> you ask as you hurry down the cobble street. No, uh, she had already perished and her soul was trying to depart. Demon was grappling with her, attempting to merge with her soul to become one. An abomination, a vampire. Her soul was strong to have held off such a beast for so long. A demon grappling with her soul, you say. Was it unreal, you ask? Perhaps. He is near. However, uh, there are many demons in the abyss eager to create a vampire. Solon was a good woman, yes, a disciple of the goddess even. What sort of vampire would she make? To merge with the spirit of demon is to become evil, she, uh, she says, says Narisa, certainly. Some, something of one's souls remain. It is said that you merge with the demon uh, if your soul holds onto something important. It is said that if you merge, it is said that as you merge with the demon, if your soul holds something dear, something important, something you hold dear, the demon cannot corrupt the part of you, even once transformed. And Solon, could she have held on to something of her own spirit, you ask? If uh, you are asking whether I should have allowed Solon to become a vampire in hope of her soul uh, persisting, then I can say with certainty, no. It is always best to destroy a vampire than to cling to such a desperate hope. Far better to allow her to move on into the arms of Alethea. You say nothing to this. Would my soul have the strength to survive such an unholy union, you wonder? Now I'm afraid that uh, there are another matters to discuss. Um, that, that would be super cool if like uh, in the one scene there's like a scene where a guy like gets stabbed or something and then he's like lying on the ground and uh, Narisa is fighting with like a bunch of dudes or like goblins or monsters or demons or whatever and then like uh, suddenly her uh, player like convulses and Narisa's like oh shit he's turning into a vampire she comes to kill you but then you are wrestling with the demon in the head and then you have to make some choices some life decision and then all of a sudden you you like jump out of the way of her mace and then you stand like in like cool anime position like to the side and looking up at the sky or something then you open your eyes like blood blood eyes and she's like oh shit he's a vampire then if you in a, all of a sudden instead you, you you are in control you actually grappled and consumed the demon soul instead of getting consumed by the demon soul like uh, this union you became the owner of both souls so it like ends up in like you going and like killing all the demons and uh, all the other like monsters 
so it's like you're now a demon you're like you're a vampire but you're actually a super powerful and actually still sane vampire so you're still the same person but you know you become a vampire that would be so cool and i i get i just watch too much anime man <laughs> i mean this sounds super fucking cool uh, that would be amazing uh, anyone wants to watch something similar of like demon transformations uh, not exactly vampires but you know demon transformation i think uh, black butler have recommended it for another thing as well but black butler is a good anime for that shit it, it's it, it has a strong you know storyline and it, it is good action and uh, concept you know the the darkness behind the scenes Uh, the essence of the show and when the ending the ending is like insanely heavy like you know you, you when you uh, come across such an ending i would i mean i mean i thought the show was very you know comedy like like there was obviously very dark underlying plots here and there but you know the most of the time they were just doing some comic stuff like you know they were um, some making some ice sculptures there was like completely filler episode that has literally nothing to do with the uh, or everything that was going on some other episodes were completely fillers and there were some unnecessary character introductions that never really came again so you would think like a show filled with fillers and comedy even with an underlying dark plot uh, it's it won't be that good but the show actually pulled through like the ending was so heavy like i mean i i assumed what sort of ending would there be and i was proven wrong and then uh, when the ending came i was like yeah okay so i uh, i was wrong until this point but now i have this information so I deduce this is going to happen but that dude like they took it even further down and became even further heavy it was it kind of fucked with my head for like hour or two after i was done watching the anime it, you know it it get it becomes difficult to breathe almost uh, the way these things are made um that show is made to be precise is is it's good it's good it's very it's a very good show okay 1020 so how long do i have hmm uh, about 3 hours i would say so you know i i would probably finish the chapter today and uh, upload two videos separately maybe we'll see now i've read there are other matters to discuss and i have seen on the front line that the goblin have driven uh, have been driven back at great cost nevertheless evil continues to seep into the city people acting as they should not possession and other evil crawling in through the sewers shadows of wing monsters in the air that tidings indeed you mutter it is said that the wing beast fly towards the central ring in the nadstrad district the temple of eternal love you ask I believe it is so she answers then we must go back to the demon's nest i don't think we should be going back to the demon's nest i think we do not have any means to defeat that thing we we need guidance in this moment like take guidance from elethia take guidance from some other intelligent persons find a sorcerer like a high level sorcerer high level wizard whatever they exist in this world and ask him what do you do to you know or maybe find a book the best the best place right now to prepare for this fight is is the library i think there is no there are only two literal there's literally two options uh, to this uh, mess first abandon the city leave the city and just run and just go somewhere else go to another city and just tell them that this is this happened they will handle it and they won't just abandon that city as well and move on and on you know there's there's a lot of the world considering you know it's not as connected in these back uh, back times so that's the first option the second option is the uh, you should go to a library and read there should be a lot to read i mean i don't know how much information library would read uh, when it possess but nanisa should know some places that have books regarding this matter except for you know the main temple that was burned down but you know there's a lot you know we have to hold on to now uh, it's very important so this chapter is over i'm going to you know do the normal thing and uh, <clears throat> um find uh, the best possible walk through mana increases too life increases when the temple windows are well lit and while all the surrounding houses are quiet and dark you and narissa are broken into one of these houses and abandoned one using your magical master key and another two of you sit side by side your faces nearly pressed against the glass of the window overlooking the temple as you have been staking out the tem- uh, temple 
rather tedious activity you have taken the opportunity to meditate and restore a measure of your manner all right ah uh, there's one a guard of some sort i suspect on the balcony there is a point to the window threatening threaten up security i see you say gloomily alas the sentries will have a view of the street nearby we cannot climb the walls or hope to use any back entrance this time and what is this narisa points down at three men two of them are dragging along uh what about kaiva by the way uh, is that her uh, which are dragging along a struggling woman whose wrists are are bound and mouth gag the two dragging the woman carry unsheathed sword the third leads the other with a lantern held high uh villains uh, villains quick we must aid her no the temple guards will see us so we lose the element of surprise you grab her arm as she turns towards the door you must watch now and learn she returns to your side breathing hard her eyes boring down on the scene below the men drag the woman up the front door of the temple the doors open for them the man in the front steps out of the way as the two shove the woman towards the threshold the men then turn back and start walking back the way from which they came the woman does not run away instead she walks forward her gaze fixed ahead straight in the temple temple of eternal love navel scat you see i think we have established that name is somewhat ironic <laughs> what i would like to know is why did she not run away when those come let her go Shh, listen you say after a moment you hear you distinctly hear it a voice more than one and then the do doors of the temple slam shut how disturbing you say well wizard i believe our time of observation is over i will not stand by and watch any more of this wickedness the temple doors appear to be unbarred perhaps we, you can pull me up there bound and gagged the guards on the balconies above will think it all very good sport find rules perhaps you say however let us also consider three thugs marching back against city perhaps you and i should have a talk with them god's no god knows i would like to meet out justice to that trio nonetheless in the meantime what fate befalls the helpless few when you ask try and capture one of the trio yeah we need information i believe information is much better than you know running in there <clears throat> i have a lot of mana actually now that i see that I should start using some heavier spells. The two of you, then again, it's a one hour long chapter, so maybe I would need those. But you know, I'll just use it. The two of you scramble out of the house and run up an alleyway towards where you last saw the tree of thugs. Remember, we need. <coughs> Excuse me. Remember, we need only take one of them alive. There is a whisper from behind as you peek around the corner. The three walk the street ahead with their backs to you. You think you could easily kill one of them with a firebolt, and Narissa charges down upon the second. That would have left one left. On the other hand, perhaps you could charm one and gain their aid. A sleep spell is another fine possibility. Although expensive in mana, they will not expect it and will likely all go down without a fight. Yeah, I'm gonna charm one of them. I have, I have enough mana to charm. I well, I have enough mana to do every single one of these. But I think the best course of action is uh, if I fire bolt him, I'm pretty damn sure uh, Narissa is gonna kill one. I'm gonna kill one, and he's gonna run up to me and stab me before Narissa smashes his head open. So I'm gonna lose one or two health, and I do not want to lose health considering my health is already pretty damn low. I'm gonna actually boost my stats now. I think about it. Let me just boost my health. Save the changes. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, so charm, uh, sleep. I don't want to do because that four mana, and while I do have a lot of mana, I do not want to spend a whole lot of it. Considering you know, later I might need it in the temple. I definitely will need it in the temple. Considering I have no good with any form of other thing. Like every time throughout this thing that I've ever chosen attack with dagger, it always ends with the. Uh, It always ends with uh, just you know slamming and bullshit. Uh, you know, uh, someone else just retreating and just stabbing me. I'm never able to do a uh, you know good stab. The only time I've actually been able to stab someone without taking damage myself is uh, when I stabbed Lady Grain from the first chapter. Yeah. Um. So I'm gonna charm one of them. A uh, little subtlety, eh? Sounds good. Which will you attempt to charm? Charm one of the swordmen. Charm the lantern man. Ooh, it's one of those, eh? 
Um, I would prefer to charm the lantern man. Oh shit, was that a bad decision? Oh, I thought uh, lantern man would be like if I, uh, like, you know, charm the lantern man, he puts out the lantern and there's like utter darkness so they can't see us, so we will like assassin their ass, but apparently not. Best to enthrall those who command your reason. You and Narisa duck back down to the alley and run up the road par parallel to one the thugs are on. The hook and hook back over through another uh, adjoining alley. There you wait in seconds. A few seconds later, the three pass by. You step forward, release the spell on the lantern bearer. You feel a connection made, but it is weak. This is this one is not so feeble-minded, you realize. The man puts his hand on his head as though he has sudden terrible headache. They were up to trouble, so they dis uh, expected trouble, you think, disappointedly. These uh, f fighting men seem to have some measure of skill. With Narisa outnumbered 2 to 1, you feel you must somehow help. You would rather not use any more spells than Narisa engage in close combat. Instead, you close in with your dagger. You do not intend to do a serious attack, just distract. As you dash forward to taunt them, one slashes out at you suddenly cuts into your side. Fortunately, the wound is not too deep. You were able to jump out of the way of his next swing. Narisa exploits this opening and manages to land a nasty blow on the back of the neck of one of your attackers. There is a sound of steel against steel as the other man slashes against uh, slashes against Narisa's chain mail. Her she staggers backward but seems more or less in uninjured. You run around to the other side of the swordman and cut out his escape. This would uh, this would have likely been a mistake since he now charges at you. Narisa has your back and actually his back. She lunges forward, bashes the side of his leg. She buckles down. Narisa then brings his mate down, mace down on his sword, smashing it against the street. He screeches in pain and the sword clatters away. Meanwhile, the one who recovered the charm spell on, uh, has recovered. He begins chanting what you presume is an evil, uh, evil prayer, but is cut short by Narisa's mace. He is quivering now. The man with the crushed wrist surrenders. You bind him as Narisa watches Mace at ready. You then drag him and the bodies of the companions into a dark alley. On whose orders do you do these deeds? Our orders are to feed the monsters with the meat they prefer above all other human flesh. It is said that the beasts prefer children's flesh above all else, says the swordsman. Narisa says uh, widen as she adjusts a grip on a weapon. Then you go to be eaten willingly. Not by their will, no. Then you go to be eaten willingly. They go to be eaten willingly. Okay. No, no, not by their will, no. The flying horrors within the temple sing a bewitching song few can resist. And why do you why do you not follow the summons too? As Narisa in a seething voice. As we hear the temple doors, we stop uh, stop our ears with these. The swordman pulled two oblong ovals of wax from his pocket. You rummage through the pockets of the two nearby cops and find a set of earplugs on each of them. Narisa makes a face when you hand her a pair, but reluctantly takes them. Who orders you to do this? I do not know her true name. She is a young... Wait, 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 wait. Is it? Wait. Who orders you to do this? Narisa asks. I know not her true name. She is known as the good lady. She is suddenly highborn. She has such eyes. Oh shit, it's it's Lady Agrain. It's definitely Lady Agrain. I stabbed her, remember? I stabbed her. But if even if I stabbed her, there's a high possibility that I didn't, you know, crush her head or bless her body. So her maybe her soul got grappled and then she became a vampire. That would be bad. And she would be a high-level vampire considering, you know. Uh, she launches she launched a very a deadly attack spell on the unicorn enough to like you know do major damage to the unicorn i'm i'm guessing uh, you know the um, unicorns are fairly strong so she must be super strong so if she got uh, you know uh, grappled by the demon so that would be a very strong vampire so that would be bad you don't know uh, you know her not and yet you do her bidding she is not one to disobey she commands many in the city now Narisa, you and you question the length, uh, swordman at length, but you, but can get a little more out of him. He seems confused at this point, and when you press him about the good lady, he only rambles about her eyes and terrible beauty. Then, then Narisa clobbers him over the head with her mace. Wh why? You stammer. Enough time has been wasted, he says. He is not dead, or at least killing him was not my intention. She bends down and checks his pulse, and then she pulls a rope from her back. From her pack and begins binding him. I'll remove my helm and wear your cloak over my armor. 
you will pretend to pull me to the temple as though to feed me to whatever it is that lies beyond these doors we will enter with these she holds up the earplugs god damn it uh, soon you have a rope around narissa's neck you pulling her up to the temple door her hands are clasped behind her hidden under your cloak that she now wears uh you look all around in uh, search of danger but you hear very little thanks to those uh, rather effective earplugs the door open as you approach when inside you quickly pull off her nose and exchange her helmet a helmet for your cloak um the door open as you approach on the side you quickly pull off uh, yeah yeah i read that okay the temple entrance uh, chamber has high ornate vaulted ceilings uh, there are statues of all manners of beast inlaid on the walls to your amusement the bodies on these statues burn bright with green fire on the oh my god on the floor a few paces ahead is what uh, looks like a severed mangled leg faintly through the wax in your ears you hear singing it is beautiful here yeah, there is a raspy undertone and sends chin chill down your spine near the ceiling three monsters soar by which by means of huge mo- mo- mottled what the fuck is mottled mortal bird wings huge mortal bird wings like mortal is like waxed or something um like deformed or something i'm not sure um it could be completely different i have no idea what mortal i'm just speculating um okay the the creatures have the upper bodies of humans uh, human women naked and smudged with blood and grime their lower bodies resemble vultures with uh, uh, large cruel Ta- talons oh it is that uh, what is that thing called um uh, uh, in dark souls there was uh, there was this uh, dark souls 2 that's when we first saw her uh, velka was it velka i'm not sure if anyone uh, knows uh, the dark souls chick the the blacksmith the crow blacksmith right uh, which has the lower body of like a semi human while uh, you know upper body of a crow yeah that i i think her name was velka the blacksmith i'm not sure well cuz someone else i'm not sure yeah completely out of my mind at this point but uh, it's kind of like that but not really these are like the top part is uh, like a like a woman and the bottom part is like a um, like a bird with wings so uh, the best thing i can give you example is these are harpies these are definitely harpies and uh, uh, if you want to see an example of it um monster masume is an anime it's about uh, you know a dude living with monster girls so one of the girls um, papi yeah her name is papi and uh, she is actually uh, a harpy so you can uh, take take it from there uh, you know just google it you know you don't have to watch the entire show it's a great show by the way if you want to watch it i mean i watched the entire show and now i'm reading the manga because i just can't st- wait for the next season to drop um So yeah, uh, I just want you to you know, try it out. You know, um, if not, then just uh, Google it. Google uh, Monster Masume P A P I, and just go to the images, and you will see a bird girl, aka a harpy. So yeah, um, that's uh, that's what they are. Near the ceiling, three monsters soar by means of huge molted bird wings. The creatures have upper bodies of human women, naked and smudged with blood and grime. The lower bodies resemble vultures. with large cruel talons as they sing you can uh, see the glint of sharp teeth they begin a slow and circling descent the one to in the lead has a long dagger clenched in one of in one fist harpies cunning and dangerous predators you realize they see harpies what do you do oh i can pretend i'm enchanted See, normally I would think of uh, pretending you are enchanted, but I feel like harpies. Like harpies are not low-level beasts. Like in 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 a normal RPG, they're just you know normal beasts. They are not exactly demonic or anything, but they're not that powerful either. They're just like okay, they are there. They're they're stronger than goblins, of course, but you know they're not that. you know super strong but uh, in a dark fantasy setting these these creatures especially when they can they can enchant you they're very strong so i'm going to i'm going to use the sleep spell cast sleep uh, achievement unlock super crushing move dang such dominance is that is that nuclear bombs on hiroshima or something what's the point 
what's the point of uh, you know putting nukes up there really um all right uh, dang such dominance the harpies are high in the air so how can you resist casting sleep on them because they would fall down yeah to your delight all three succumb to your spell and plummet to the marble floor one of them awakened by the impact screeches in pain pain while struggling to stand her left wing beats furiously her right is bent and hangs limp when she charges slams her mace into the wounded harpy's face silencing it the other two wounded monsters do not even stand up before narissa finishes them off such power wizard narissa smiles upon you as though or struck uh, so i just like go over like stand up like sleep or something that would actually look super epic of course she is a uh, or struck that's pretty cool such power wizard narissa smiles upon you as though or struck that was rather impressive you think to yourself although you are careful not to say this out loud there is no need you and narissa take a moment to recover and survey your surroundings up there narissa points up at the stone arches ox arches i mean i know they are called ox like i don't call them arch like, you know like arch mage like people call it arch mage sometimes like i'm, I'm i call it ox mage like i don't say at the h i just say ox mage it sounds much better than arch mage um similarly the only time i actually use the h is when i say arches like stone arches so i don't say stone if it's a single stone i'm going to say stone arc i don't say stone arch but if it's multiple of them then i say stone arches and arcs arcs how do i am i supposed to even pluralize arc it already sounds plural with an s a nest for these bees perhaps in a crook where the stone arc um, juts away from the main wall there is a tangle of straw illuminated by the green burning statues do you see that the two legs bound together dangle from the nest i saw them move say narissa uh, it cannot be harpy's legs for they haven't human legs you say a captive of the beast please uh, you must climb up and see must i you wonder Psst. you hiss up at the nest high above you see the legs sway as though in response although you hear nothing you must in shout in and narissa wants see the stairs to the upper floor there may be more beast above as the captive legs are bound so he is likely gagged at least climb half the distance and then call up Psst. you um, hiss again dimly you hear help from above in a raspy voice climb <laughs> narissa whispers you consider the arc stone it is so heavily inlaid with patterns that uh, and figures that you suppose that even an unskilled climber such as yourself could manage it if you slip up have a simple feather fall spell that will allow you to land safely thankfully the climb is easy you step onto the stone head of a manticore grab the arm of a wooden nymph so so on until you reach the nest you are greeted with an awful sight as you topple over the ledge onto the stone next to you is a bound old man or at least what is left of him his eyes are gone merely lit- little dark pits he has no left arm only half of his right arm remains perhaps most disturbing of all is his lack of genitals <laughs> uh, gods you gasp human you are human i cannot see yes uh, you whisper naval scat what has happened to you i am old the wing devils use me to have me to only uh, the wing beasts use me only to snack on when they have nothing better except for my eyes those they fought over uh, i have a rope okay so they basically took off one uh, ripped one of his arm off and uh, ripped his eyes out right <clears throat> and he somehow survived i have a rope i will tie this uh, around you and i have a rope i will tie this around you and no he interrupts me there is nothing left of me oh, oh they ripped his dick off too right uh, there is nothing left of me they took my sight my arms my manhood no i ask you to kill me slit my throat and then uh, they tied me in place so i cannot even roll off to my death i i cannot there is nothing there is time for nothing else they will return we have slain the three of them you uh, you say there are more uh, before they took my eyes i saw more than a dozen they leave this place to the bidding, bidding of the mistress You have met the mistress. Never thank the gods. The winged devils call her the good lady. I should have think what manner of beast could command her. You put a reassuring hand on one of his stumps. This is all I know. Be thankful that they spared my lips and tongue. 
लॉन्ग इनफ टू टेल यू दैट मच हरी हरी अवे नाउ एंड गेट एड टू स्ले द रेस्ट ऑफ दैम बट फर्स्ट आई बेग ऑफ यू इफ यू हैव एनी पिटी प्लीज प्लीज किल मी वेन यू नो आई मीन ही इज एस्किंग ही गेव मी इन्फॉर्मेशन यू नो सो इट्स अ फेयर डील इट्स इट्स सिंपल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट ही गेव मी इन्फॉर्मेशन इन रिटर्न आई एम प्रोवाइडिंग माई सर्विसेज यू नो सर्विस ऑफ फेवर दैट्स हाउ यू नो लीगल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट वर्क uh you can there there are actually contracts based on that that is my mic inside out what the fuck um hold on <clears throat> wait um many times you would see in contracts um uh, that uh, how should i put this uh, the contracts are, are made also based on uh, favors or services you know um like i do something for you and you do something for me i think it's called a reciprocal promise but it could take the form of a contract but this is definitely not a contract this is a, actually a reciprocal promise it's like i am doing i'm like i'm going to do your homework you clean my house <laughs> doesn't seem like a fair trade but you know it is what it is so i'm going to kill him uh, i'm not going to i'm going to not going to leave him like he he has one arm his eyes are gone his dick is gone and he's also old as it is he's not like a young man so he like could do something maybe in life and these old times a blind person like a blind person cannot do much nowadays when this this much advancement has happened until unless he gets an eye transplant a blind person already very few of them are actually capable of like you know achieving something like good in life most of them just cannot like i'm not saying like being blind is just like they are dead or something or they are useless or something but you know it's it's a big part a bl- being blind is a big thing like if you don't have uh, you know you can listen you can speak uh, you don't have one arm you don't have both arms and even then it's like it's to some extent people work things out like they work people do things but without eyes is very difficult For very few people actually capable of attaining anything uh, the only time it would be like if they are giving a platform you know uh, if they live in a already wealthy or like a mediumly wealthy house the family can take care of them and they sit down learn with braille and uh, you know they maybe write books or you know study and become something at the later in the day but not everyone not not all blind people can do that's very difficult for a blind person honestly like i don't even know how they like maintain their sanity like it's not darkness it's eternal darkness there's like one sense that you cannot get i, I mean like uh, you know one of those uh, uh, there's a place in um, uh, there's a place in uh, what is that place called i forgot uh, there's a place uh, where you know the sound is dumbed down they they put lots of uh, foams and sound absorbing materials on the wall so they made the quietest room in the you know in the world uh like that quietest room it makes it so that you know there's no echo and there's like little to no sound is like nothing no sound at all except for your own sound that you can barely hear because you know it's muffled so um so uh, you know staying in that room for too long and uh, people start to like uh, have uh, like problems they start to like get angry or like get anxiety because you know there's a sense that all of a sudden is just gone so a person who's born blind would be wouldn't be wouldn't know the pleasure of being you know you know having vision so they wouldn't exactly be that appalled by it. i mean they wouldn't like think like oh my god i need to die but a person who is normal and then is like a goes to this state i don't think that's a good place for anyone to be so <clears throat> goodbye old man thanks for the information slaughter you can say cutting the ropes that uh, tie him to the nest to enable the old man to make the final choice but instead to spare him uh, this final anguish you pull out a dagger without a word slit his throat from ear to ear that's a very oh yeah i get it but this i don't like the using term ear to ear when you're cutting the throat because it's like it feels like you're cutting is like the middle part they're cutting through his nose and eyes to get to the other ear or something but you know i get the point but you know sounds weird quickly you tie the rope off rabble down as fast as you can narisa pull, comes out from behind a pillar where she has been hiding and uh, ask you what you saw a dead man you reply 
Just then you hear the flap of wings above, accomplished by voice and crackling. More harpies, hurry, you exclaim. You run down the chamber entrance. Entrance chamber. As you run, you notice that the uh, cackling suddenly stops. There's a pause and then screams of anguish fill your ear. They must have found their sisters, you think. You run to a pair of double doors covered with bloody symbols that look familiar and fill you with a sense of dread. Nevertheless, you dare not delay and without so much as a pause, you open the doors. Upon slamming the doors behind, the two of you are in complete darkness. You hear Narissa's voice as she utters a brief fear and then the room lights up and the head of her mace begins burning bright wide. The doors have no locks or any braces to bar them. The blood swan symbols are on this side of the door too. And now you remember why. <coughs> I remember this before, you whisper, pointing to the symbols. I believe it is a word used as a barrier to spirits, to demons perhaps. Is, uh, is the barrier to keep spirits in or out? I suspect the one in castle awareness was to keep them in. There are creatures on the other side of the door. These doors are not locked yet. Uh, do, they do not follow. A bad sign, I would say. Even still, we dare not stand here. Let us move. Perhaps you could douse that light. It is like the sun, the light of Alethea, not some mundane torch, says Anis, uh, Narissa. Yes, and I suspect it is also a beacon to those who would harm us. We might be wise to use a hooded lantern to guide our way. It is said that the evil spirits find the light of Alethea mo most unpleasant, perhaps they will not approach. <coughs> unpleasant, a spirit from the abyss knows no comfort. Perhaps your light will only provoke them. Narissa shrugs. I leave it to your decision, wizard. You have seen these symbols before. Perhaps you know what lies ahead. Yeah, I think uh, going to the hooded lantern is a... I'm not... You know, let me think. Let me think. Just hold on. Keep the light on. Maybe they... They will actually be warded off. I mean, the vampire got warded off. And that should be a fairly powerful demon. Uh, what is the good lady exactly? And you, oh, I know. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. So the good lady is, uh, you know, Kaiba. After we kill the Baron, she leaves the body of the Baron. Even if we don't kill him, we probably leaves the body of the Baron. And then enters the body of Kaiba by, by somehow removing her soul or combining, uh, you know, herself with the, the soul and the take, um, taking con complete control. So it's, it's Kaiba mixed with Unreal. So the, the question is, did he like expel, expel her soul and then entered the body? If that's the case, it's no longer Kaiba. Kaiba is dead. Uh, and if he combined his soul with uh, uh, Kaiba's soul and became a vampire, then uh, there could be a small possibility that Kaiba, you know, exists somewhere in there. But not that she would be strong enough to take over. That would be stupid. If this show goes like, oh, like I go in front of her like, Kaiba, come on, man. Like, uh, come on, don't be like a bitch. And she's like, oh, no, it's this is the guy who saved me. And now I'm, I'm, not, I'm no longer evil. Um, so, yeah, I think the best uh, course of action would be to, yeah, yeah, you get the point, you get the point. Um, uh, so, uh, we are probably going to face off with her and we'll see what to do. I would prefer not to kill her, but, you know, if she poses too much of a threat, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think twice before killing her, you know. But, but I'm sure it's not her at this point, so it doesn't really matter all that much she's probably going to use that one of those like in the last moment when i'm about to kill her she's like oh no i've returned to my senses don't don't do this and she's like oh i feel like hesitate or like attack her and, like hesitate i was like oh shit oh shit it's kaiba and he's like turns around and kills me and that's that's have that type of bullshit i'm gonna leave this for the next time actually um i've recorded for long enough and uh, over an hour so thank you for watching and uh, like and sub, share the video, comment down below if you want to say something. I would talk about it if you want uh, me to say something. I was thinking of doing like a let's talk type show. So if anyone, uh, you know, leaves a comment about, uh, um, <clears throat> leaves a comment regarding, uh, you know, uh, you know, what they want me to talk about. I, I don't mind talking about literally anything like religion to um you know politics to some other you know issues across the world social or other you know scientific issues or anything regarding that matter also in the description is my twitter go follow me there every now and then you know i share stuff there like photos and stuff like that not my photos obviously uh, i'm talking about like uh, 
you know, etchy photos and some hentai photos I, or, or like, you know, have conversations and other sort of stuff. I do a lot. I mean, honestly, my Twitter is much more active than my YouTube. I'm uploading on YouTube now, but, you know, not really anyone is watching. So if you're watching this like in five years, well, <laughs> props to you, I guess. Um, also, uh, in the description, my DTube channel, that's where I play the hentai games. It's another website. I've already told you multiple times. Just go on their website. And, uh, you know, when you click the link, it will take you to my channel. There are going to be two videos. On the top, top right corner is a gear button. Click that. Click NSFW. Click show. And then it's going to pop out all the videos that are NSFW that are hidden in my channel. So, thank you for watching and bye-bye.